Hello, happy to have you with me today. My name is Mihaela Gidersa. I'm a software engineer. And um, besides my interest in the tech, I also like to prepare presentations and content for, for events like this one today. So I want to thank the organizers for having me. I feel honored to be a part of such an amazing lineup of speakers. Right from the start, I have to say that in this occasion, I'm not here to talk all sorts of technical concepts or give you the best perspective on the best architecture. Actually, today I'm from the um, part that thinks that this is sometimes a toxic tree that we have, thinking that it's always about our processes and our positioning levels and, you know, the rules that we have, technically speaking. Today, I would like us to stop, look at the team, and use our expertise and knowledge to see the real shape of the current context. We have to admit that developers are real people. And yeah, we need more than just the, the task at hand in order to actually grow into being professionals. Although on one side, technical stuff you know, can be learned from a lot of tutorials and uh, uh, a lot of articles and so on. Well, on the other side, the not so technical part, it's not that accessible. Creating a strong team and strong team dynamics, it's not something that is, uh, is so accessible because people are different, products are different. And that's why we have to do some knowledge sharing on this side also. Whatsoever, beyond delivering a presentation, I'm here to, you know, discuss, uh, maybe contribute to creating better teams and uh, better products. But I also, I'm interested in learning from you. And uh, yeah, let's discuss at the end, uh, see exactly what your experiences were, maybe, or if you will have any questions. Well, <laughs> what is architecture? We are not the first ones asking ourselves this. We, are, we won't be the last ones. I'm sure that uh, uh, the discussion is always, always uh, open. But when it comes to, to this, there are a lot of definitions. And actually, because I've been also searching, I found many interpretations. And unfortunately, many of them were confusing or hard to tackle. And most of them seem pretty abstract. And hard to understand especially for a developer that is in the beginning of uh, of the career you know just trying to see exactly what is the context so long story short what is architecture is a base structure upon which we build step by step one component after another creating a relationship between them and consider that all of this is being realized while taking into consideration the whole overview the whole context of, uh, of the project, of the application that we are trying to build. And we can talk about architecture without actually touching a bit the su subject of, uh, of design. Because architecture, in many cases, is being confused with design. And this makes me think that, again, it's the result of uh, our tendency of defining things a bit too abstract. But as discussed, architecture is a blueprint, a structure that defines the high level components of our system and yeah, the way they interact, the way they, in which they, uh, they evolve in relationship with uh, one another. And it's important to, to note that choosing the right or the wrong architectural pattern will determine how the quality uh, attributes of our application will actually be validated how scalable would be, how reliable, how performant, even security. On the other hand, a system design shapes things more at code level, the way each component works, the purpose of each element. Of course, the relationship between those low level components and so on. Well, having a strong system design helps the development team be more um, efficient, more organized, and especially helps a lot in terms of understanding what are the responsibilities of some functions, some modules, some classes, what they can't or can do. 
And all of this is possible by identifying a system's design. So, you know, later we can decide what design patterns we want to, to use in what context, what to, uh, best practices we, we want to follow and so on. And I really liked uh, how Simon, uh, Simon Brown uh, put it. He said something like, the architectural design, the architectural decisions are the ones that you can't change, you know, in an afternoon. You can make a decision as, uh, about architecture and change it that quick. So this is also a, a very good uh, way to differentiate the, the design from the architecture. And let's think about this for, for a second, because precisely having into account that we can change an architectural decision in an afternoon, well, the first step in the process of architecting software is understanding what is significant and why is it significant. And when talking about significant matters, we talk about concepts like the technologies that we choose to work with or the high level structure that we, uh, we will use. And most importantly, maybe, is understanding how to work with some risks that at some point might appear. So some risk management. And understanding this sort of matters really makes a difference for the development team. You're going to ask me why. Well, it's easy to think that if you're a good coder and following some very well-tested approaches, the, the knowledge about architecture is something that you just don't need. Actually, it's not like that. I have to uh, contradict on this one because there are some very important benefits from getting an overview on what we are building. And also we can see exactly what are we uh, building? How are those components interacting? So we can know exactly what are the decisions that we're making um, in, in our day-to-day -day task, or if we are trying to work with a new feature, how exactly are we going to integrate it in the existing architecture? And questions like, uh, like these ones related the uh, main components of the system, uh, their relationships, uh, the cost of every decision that I'm going to make and so on, are very good for the uh, process of predicting when exactly and how exactly the system will change. And you know, that is uh, Darwin's theory that says that is not the species that uh, is the strongest that survives the, the longest, but the one that adapts better to change. And I really like to think that if Darwin's would, Darwin would have been a uh, software developer or would have worked in, in this area, he would have stated that the system that adapts better to change is the one that survives the longer because it's important to understand how change is going to integrate in our system. It's important to predict those kinds of changes and to adapt very quickly to those changes. So going a bit in the area of uh, development, for a very long time, we had to deal with this idea that the development team should get their attention on the, on the programming part, don't bother, bother with architectural concepts since they are not our concern. It's such a wrong way to look at things because there are so many benefits to having a look from above at what you're working. And let me give you my perspective. When I started looking a bit more in the you know architectural context and the high level decisions and the high level concepts, it wasn't because I've just, you know, uh, been so uh, so curious from the start, but more like one day I was working on a feature that was complex that I had to integrate in, uh, in the existing context of the system. And I just realized that I don't understand what I'm building. We were actually distributed in, um, in several teams. So it was very hard to actually have access to the overview. So you're, you're just working on your, on your little task and everything was fine. But at some point, 
in my development, I felt this need. I felt the need of understanding what I'm building. I felt the need of uh, understanding how can I make the best decisions in order to create quality. So I just started asking people around and, uh, you know, just uh, spamming the architect in order to explain to me what is happening in there and things like this. And the best part of this, besides the fact that I started doing my work so much better, was the fact that actually I was able to come with solutions to the problems. Before I was just complaining, you know, complaining about why this isn't working and who made this decision, why do we have to implement other people's decision and things like this. All of a sudden I was by understanding what is happening in the in the architectural uh, side, I was able to understand some decisions uh, when I've seen some problems to actually make some steps in order to resolve those problems, to come with solutions and stop complaining. And also, to be honest, I, I started uh, liking my job uh, much more from that point. So, it's important for us to like go outside of our comfort zone, sometimes pushed, sometimes just because we are curious. And in this journey, there are some myths that I, I met and I would like to together with you to destroy today, step by step and see exactly what those are. So the first one is the fact that architecture is something that it's inflexible and it's forever and you just discussed about it in the beginning and you don't worry about it anymore we'll discuss about this is not the case then the fact that the architecture is an architect's problem again along the way and as being more and more involved in uh, in the high level uh, processes of uh, the teams that i work with and by growing professionally more, I definitely uh, destroy this, this myth. And we are going to discuss also about this one. And last but not least, maybe one of my favorites, architecture is not about coding. It's like architect, the architect is someone that shouldn't even be bothered with code. I'm sure that at least one of these myths was, uh, was also part of your career. So we will just discuss about them in the in the following minutes. And we can't really break myths and discuss architecture without discussing the key role, the architect. What is an architect? Well, independently of what we are about to discuss or how often the role of an architect is pretty hard to clearly define, I have to mention that it's very important to understand even from the start that the context in which we work and the methodologies also shape the role a lot. What I strongly believe though is that there is a strong need for evolution in order to take this role. You need to gradually work towards having the expertise and the attitude because you will have to you know face some challenges you have to make some decisions that have a lot of impact. So you have to try to grow, to level up your, to step up your game. And for the longest time, there was this idea that an architect is someone that at some point also did some developing, but from the moment that it was named in this, uh, in this role, never again, he touched the code. And I have to, to be honest, excuse me for my irony, but I have to be honest because this part of the architect seeing, you know, looking like someone that uh, it's unapproachable is all again, part of my experience. If I remember correctly, uh, just in the beginning of my, of my career, I worked with an architect or I worked in a team where I did not have the possibility or the honor to meet the architect. And I worked for that project for like one year and a half. So that's pretty, pretty important. Then when I switched to my next project and I've seen that the architect was standing 
at the desk next to mine, it was such a big change of context. And it wasn't like someone that was coding with you or doing daily tasks, but the fact that he was there, the fact that he was open to discuss when the team had questions, the fact that he came with um, all sorts of solutions or all sorts of ideas, and he was constantly asking the team about their perspective also, you know, the seniors, they were he was trying to, to get the vibe. It was a game changer. And that's exactly when I understood what is the difference between a title and a full role with full responsibility and full, you know, a full-time job. Then another idea is the fact that, uh, you know, the architect has to know it all. It's, he's like the God of the stack. And I'm thinking like, oh my God, you mean like he, he should know every technology, like every detail, this is preposterous. It's unrealistic and no one will ever be that good to actually fulfill <laughs> and stay with the, with the role. And who'd ever want such a big pressure? Where I think that more realistically is to actually use the technical expertise of the team. This way you also ensure that you are raising the team. You know, you can take part in the development process, doing some, uh, uh, some actions. You don't have to code exactly, but you can be, you can be involved, as I was saying uh, before about uh, the good architect or the, the one that I liked more. <laughs> the fact that he, he kept uh, collaborating with the team and discussing with the seniors and the technical leaders and, you know, trying to, to get a vibe of the team. And besides the fact that you can discuss and collaborate and have the team close, so create that, uh, that link, it's also nice that you get the feedback on your architectural decisions because you can see how your perspective impacts actually the implementation process. If your decisions are actually grounded in reality and if your decision actually can be implemented by real people, you know, if it's doable in the end. And um, another one, another uh, idea about the architect is the fact that, or it was the fact that it defines and guards the architecture. And again, I'm thinking, is he like some kind of architecture police? Like the architecture is something that fixed and hard to implement that you actually have to, to guard it, to take care that no one ever does anything to it. How about understanding this system and combine everything with the collaboration that I was mentioning before and the feedback from the team in order to create a more grounded in a reality system. You know, this besides the fact that the architecture is not something that never changes. And in here, yeah, there are uh, some sides that we can discuss, but in the end, we are talking about evolution of the product. So it might imply, and it implies most of the, most of the times, evolution also of the architecture. So let's just say like this, it's something, it's a role, you know, that stands on collaboration and feedback. And maybe at some point, someone else can come with ideas related to architecture. Then the architect is the one that uses the technical expertise of the team. And at the same time is helping the team grow in order to be more, maybe more self-organizing and as the system evolves, maybe to, uh, try to get a bit outside of the team, see exactly how the team is um, uh, working and yeah, help others grow into the role maybe from the team if they are very talented people. And of course, in the end, also, it's not about that fixed architecture, but more like uh, discussing, collaborating, understanding how the product is evolving and trying to keep up with, with the trends. So in the following minutes, I would like to discuss about two perspective, perspectives. One is the one related to leadership. The other one is related to the knowledge, you know, that we were discussing uh, about knowing it all and be the best and uh, master the stack. 
Well, let's start with the, with the first one. Often leadership weights more than management. Why am I saying this? Well, there is a difference between management and leadership. Management is a lot about maybe tasks, um, some very specific steps that you want to, to do in order to achieve the end goal. Leadership is more about people, how you show up for people, how you collaborate with them, how you help them grow. And I think that an architect should be a leader, a leader that has an overview, that has experience in a lot of areas and insights with both functional and yeah, technically speaking. And an architect should understand exactly how to work with those team dynamics in order to be sure that he actually builds a product that in the end has as attributes quality, um, you know, performance, security, and that everyone in the team works towards the same goal. And related to this collaboration part and leadership, I have to be honest that I've witnessed a very interesting uh, change in one of the teams that I worked with. When I joined the team, yeah, the team was pretty, uh, you know, not concerning with the architecture, but not very happy about the context either. And their decisions were being made on the context that they had, you know, their tasks or their features, only the ones that you were working with. They weren't able to understand the whole context. Well, in time, while trying to understand and get the most of the, of the full context, they, they changed their perspective so much, they started learning more in order to make better decisions. I just seen a transformation in the team and I was so happy to see that uh, that is happening. So this kind of leadership, this kind of collaboration, this kind of feedback is so important in the teams. And we have to grow that part in the team dynamics. So it's, yeah. You know, we don't always talk about the soft side of being a software architect, but in the real world, an architect's role is both worrying about the important technical decisions, but also about leading, giving the team a direction, explain, coach. We are basically talking about a leadership role where soft skills are so important. And a team that has the same overview, that has the same, um, you know, the same objective and understands what is the goal in the project or the goal for the next, I don't know, iterations. It's a game changer. Because team dynamics are so important. Then we are going a bit more into detail related to that knowledge part. Well, if you ask me, I really think that an architect should have software development background. If as an architect, you don't know and you don't understand what you are building, what is happening with your decisions, what is happening in the code base, you might fail to actually make good decisions. But here is where the misunderstanding is, is happening. Many think that the architect has to also be the best developer in the, in the team, which we already discussed is not possible at some point, someone else in some area might have a better idea than, than you. And what I think that is even more important is this ability of switching between code and implementation details to the architectural big picture. Yes, as an architect, you should own best practices. Uh, you should have an overview and design, uh, design patterns, uh, architectural patterns, yeah, you have to understand how some technologies bring more value into, into your um, application than others, but you don't have to own every detail. For the details, you can use the knowledge that the team has. You can collaborate with them in order to see exactly what is the next step in your architectural journey. 
So yeah, being an architect is challenging and definitely takes a lot of uh, knowledge and experience. At the same time, you don't need to be an expert in any particular area of software development to become one. It is better to have understanding of software development and be able to communicate your knowledge effectively while also being backed up by best practices. So we discussed about architecture, we discussed, discussed about the architect, we broke some myths. So let's go a bit into the idea about decisions, because we were discussing before about the quality of being able to predict change nowhere when we are also uh, mentioning Darwin. Well, making decisions concerning architectural aspects is a very, very sensitive subject because those decisions have huge impact. We already discussed, we already <laughs> agreed on this, maybe we'll see in the end. But one of the best practices in software development is to avoid making decisions as much as you can. Yeah? Try to get the most information that you can in order to be sure that you can build the best, uh, the best product. Of course, you can push this de decision, you know, and definitely, at some point, you have to, to give an answer, to, to make a, a draft of decision in order to start building. Well, another thing that you can do is to think in terms of evolvable structures. We have to be aware of the fact that technologies and tools evolve and change in order to create better products and when i'm discussing about better products i'm just going to say this think about yourself as a user think about the applications that you are using like five years ago or ten years ago if you would use them already uh, also now but think about the applications that are still on the market they just did a complete redesign and a lot of changes those are applications that are open to change yeah, this is exactly the kind of mindset that we have to put also in our work as a team, as architects in the end. The fact that we have to be aware about everything that can impact our architecture in time, and we have to think in terms of assist, evolve and change without having a lot of cost. And In order to gain this kind of overview, understanding exactly how to work with some uh, uh, metrics, how to just have that feel that, okay, this uh, approach might work or might not. I want to mention that you need experience in a lot of areas. You have to challenge yourself into working with uh, different projects, into creating that experience that will give you, you know, as we were saying, the, will make you capable of making decisions and face the challenges. And I want to start by pointing out that becoming a software architect is not something that you become, off, you know, automatically. And it's more than a role. It's actually a role that has both technical and leadership stuff. So it's not just something in your CV that you can just add. Although in many cases, the role of an architect can be defined also by the context, you have to be prepared in any way for the challenges, have the experience, the expertise, and the confidence that you are ready to work with the decision uh, and the decisional process that that you will have to face in the challenges. So at this point, you might be thinking like, okay, Mihaela, you kept mentioning about this thing of collaborating with a team and that the team can at some point take the role of the architect even for one idea. So you want to say that if the team is self-organizing enough, we don't need an architect? Well, first of all, I want to mention this to make a disclaimer, if the team, actually, if the product 
is a simple product that does not evolve very much in time. You know, uh, maybe the team is also uh, uh, formed of uh, senior developers, yeah, and the components of the team did not change very much in time. Maybe an architect is not necessary to be present as much, yeah, because they might be self-organizing enough to do the job, having into account that. Uh, as I was mentioning, there won't be big changes or big challenges. But when we are talking about a team that has different levels of experience in the in, in between uh, members, a team that also has to face with the evolution of the product a lot in time, maybe a product that changes a lot in time. Yeah, we can't really depend on a team that it's so unstable, you know, because people have different uh, knowledge of experience, if different knowledge of involvement with the team. Some are more, you know, trying to do things work. Some are just like, okay, it's a nine to five and that's it. I have a life, which is both of them are totally okay. Each one does the decisions for, uh, for their own good. But it's important that in this kind of context, we need someone that takes the ownership, that it's re responsible. Of course, the architect will work with the team, will collaborate with the team, and the team can take the role from time to time. But it's good to have someone that takes care of the evolution of the product. Uh, if we discuss a complex structure, know how, knows how to, to work with it. If we have many stakeholders, he or her is the one that uh, has to, to deal with uh, yeah, the changes and the discussions and everything. So we are discussing a, a complex context. So going back to, to questions, does this mean that every developer can be an architect? Well, I really think that developers can grow with a very big accent on grow into becoming an architect. But it's very important to understand two concepts. Having an overview, you know, occasionally and engaging with the team from time to time or with the systems architecture from time to time does not make you an architect. You can collaborate for the architecture, but that just coming with some idea at some point does not make you an architect. Then the fact that you have an architect that is takes the ownership and is responsible and things like this, does not make you res uh, responsibility free of how the system evolves and how the quality of the system changes in time. You can say like, okay, um, the product fails, so it's an architect's fault. No, we are a team. So it's everyone's fault. So yes, as a developer, you might be taking some uh, parts of the architecture of the architecture role, but there is a lot to, to grow from my perspective to that role. Okay, then we have to discuss about, uh, oh, seems like we have uh, some, uh, some noise. So let's, uh, let's discuss about uh, if the architects should be involved in the, in the process of coding. Well, I really think, as I was saying, that it should have the, the background uh, in development. And of course, as an architect, you can be as involved with the team and do tasks with the team. But there are some ways that you can actually keep the vibe of the team and see exactly what is happening. So first of all, it would be yeah, do some actual coding. But if you don't have the time, you can use that changing of role sometimes, maybe uh, help someone, I don't know, a senior, yeah, give the role to that to them from time to time. You know, just uh, informal, just to see how they work and how their ideas will uh, will grow, and then discuss with them. So keep close with with the seniors. Maybe take some ownership from uh, very important features, yeah, and keep close to the team for uh, for those in order to see how they evolve. Do pair programming, some code reviews at some times. You can provide some uh, quality gates and you know 
put some unit tests, unit tests for, uh, for architecture. So there are ways. You just have to find the combination that works better for you in order to keep engaged with the team. So as an architect, you don't have to code, but don't get lost in the detail, in the uh, high level uh, structures either. Just try to keep a balance and collaborate with, with the team. So from our, what we've discussed, maybe with some exceptions, architecture is part of the development process, part that later is being taken over and implemented. From that development team is where architects are growing. So on one side, it's our responsibility to break the rules as architects and help, uh, help the team grow and also get the feedback from the team and collaborate with the team in order to build the best products. From the developer's part, it's important to ask to be involved, to try to you know, give ideas or ask when you don't understand something or find a mentor or someone that can help you in order to grow in your professional journey. journey. So it's our responsibilities from both sides to actually make from everything a learning opportunity that can be an important stone in our career. It doesn't matter if we are at the beginning of the career or later in the career. So although we discussed a lot about the best ways of doing things, I would like to give you to leave you with, uh, with some ideas in the end for developers. Ask questions, ask to be involved, don't be afraid of architecture and don't take it as something that you can't have opinions about or you can't uh, discuss about. Try to challenge your, your architect to actually help you understand what is happening in the system. Challenge also the architectural decisions if you have arguments and try to, to work with that. Work on understanding the big picture and don't wait like I did for, you know, the need of going outside of your comfort zone. Just try to work step by step. And again, ask to be involved. Involved always. If you want to understand something, if you want to work in, in one uh, specific area, just go with it. I've never been refused when I uh, ask someone to, to help me at least not in this industry. So ask for guidance and see exactly what, is, what are the steps that you have to follow in order to go to that role. If you're thinking about being an architect, if you don't think about being an architect, well, I still encourage you to work on your best version, on your best professional version. Then for the architects, well, think in terms of evolvable structures. Yeah, and be open to, to change with the systems that you are building. Keep track exactly on how the, the team is implementing the architecture and get feedback from the team. So work on that collaboration. Be inclusive and let them or encourage the team to actually give you feedback and give you ideas because they might have some insights that you've never thought about it being <laughs> there above working with the high level structures and get your hands dirty from time to time. As we discussed, there are options to keep close to the code base. There are options to keep close to, to the team and get the vibe of the team. So why not? Always lean for collaboration, working together and cre create you know, two ways feedback processes. I really believe in the amazing benefit effect of every software team considering software architecture. Failing to do this leads to inconsistencies, integration issues, especially when we are discussing different, you know, different teams or complex uh, organization of the team. Hard to understand code base and not mentioning you know, a lot of quality attributes that become harder and harder to maintain and actually grow as the system evolves. On the other side, we have the team that accumulates. Yeah, so besides the product issues, we have the team that accumulates a lot of frustration. So it gets harder to work 
in that environment. That's why you might have people that want to leave from the team, um, people that uh, maybe are just working on their tasks and they don't care about uh, the rest. So yeah, you might have some communication issues in there. Encourage um, this mindset of helping each other, collaborating, staying present around the, the coding processes and, you know, work together and make sure you, you have the same vision in the end. This is, uh, this is the most important. Building strong, quality-oriented products and never forget to, to have fun. In the end, we should like our work. Thank you very much. And let's see if we have questions. Okay, so we have some questions. Let's see, does architecture takes into account what tech is used or is it in a higher level that the tech stack? And in which level do you take into account the tech, ava the tech available to be used? Well, I think it's very important to take into consideration the kind of um, technology that you want to work with because you need that, that technology to complement your architecture. For example, I'm just going to give you a very uh, discussed in the last year's uh, uh, comparison. Let's say if I have, if I thought about an architecture, um, I don't know, an MVC architecture, yeah. And, and here I'm talking just on the on the client side because it's easier to, to give this example be, uh, between Angular and React. If we think about those two, they work with some very specific patterns. Maybe the patterns that Angular gives are not working with your architecture, with your choice of architecture. Yeah, and also the way that uh, uh, React uh, works might not work very well with your architecture. Just think in terms of okay, is this technology going to make things easier for me, or I'm just overcomplicating just because that technology is you know a trendy one right now or I'm just choosing it because I've worked with it and it seems to me that it's familiar. So yes, it is important. And it's actually important uh, from the first uh, steps in actually building the, the system, the, archi the architecture. Because yeah, you have a structure, let's say you thought about the structure, some architectural patterns that you want to follow. Next, you have to do is to think about what are the, the technologies you want to work with. Okay, next one. How does the workflow of an architect looks like along the lifespan uh, of a specific project? Well, in here, it's a long discussion, especially because, as I was saying, first, it depends in the con of the context of, of the product and the methodologies that uh, the product is working, because uh, maybe in Agile, it works in, in a certain way, in Waterfall, the collaboration or the processes that uh, the methodology defines are different. So, you know, the level of uh, interaction may be different. That's why I also insisted in the, in the presentation of, okay, there are things that might be different and maybe some that don't apply, but in the end, think about those parts of collaborating, keeping close with the team as much as we can, um, see exactly from the relationships that we have with the stakeholders, how the product is evolving and how we can in integrate those changes in our product. So I wouldn't put it in a very uh, rigid uh, lifespan, but more like I would take care to, to create the best uh, context for, for my product. We have, again, a question about the technology stack. So the architecture is defined by the technology stack, for example, programming languages that the development team better know or would have to be completely agnostic. This is also important uh, when you have, let's say, when you're working already with, uh, with a team and the team has very good knowledge in that uh, uh, specific technology. Of course, you're not going to change 
overnight the technology, but more like see exactly what improvements you can uh, you can make in your processes, in your way of working, and in the architecture actually in order to um, to improve the product. In here, it's a also a discussion of costs. You have to see what is the cost of uh, changing uh, uh, the, the technology versus making some changes in your way of doing things. How does architecture addresses the recent trends where applications have a front end side and back end side? How does architecture relates to this concept uh, concert, concerns of modern application? Well, as um, as we've seen in the last years, uh, the client part is not only about some HTML, some a little JavaScript and some CSS, but it's a lot also about more complex uh, concerns and more complex structures. So as you can see, uh, there are some approaches in that part also, as in um, you can check maybe Jamstack, uh, microfrontends, um, Flux, in order to see a bit the patterns that you can use for that. Of course, it remains in the in the full picture of architecture, but it becomes more and more a self evolvable part. And yes, you should think about that as something that uh, should be as self evolvable as possible, especially with the evolution of the technology stack in the area of client. What deliver produces the work an, of an uh, of an architect. Well, in here it's a uh, yeah it's a very um, complex discussion. But maybe just to add for what we've discussed, the prod the architect it's a leader for the team and also gives direction for the team. So you I I wouldn't say that. Uh, Actually, I would say that work of an architect, it's the end result as the team has it, is the product itself. So he's a very important part in the in the in the team and in the end in the in the product because he is the one that has a responsibility of um, taking care of some processes and the relationship with the stakeholders and so on. Which books, blogs would you recommend the software architect that created? in your bit impact of knowledge. Okay, in here I could maybe uh, make a list we can discuss uh, on um, uh, LinkedIn or Twitter about this, maybe uh, come back with uh, with a reply later with, with a list. I think it's uh, just to save some time since we are a bit late. Is the work of an architect a full-time role? Does the architect work in several projects within the same organization? Yes, it is a full-time role, especially if we are discussing, again, it's about the context. If it's a very complex product, he might be working only on, on one product. At some point, he might be also give guidance to, to another product in the organization. So yes, I've seen, I work in, I work with this kind of, uh, with this kind of projects that had uh, an architect to, uh, to two or three products. So it is, it is doable. Is something that uh, can be done, but it also depends a lot on uh, the stage in which each product is, um, the experience of the team, if there are some um, possibilities of making the team self-organizing and things like this. And what's the role of an architect in an existing project already in production? I've seen... Um, in uh, just a case where I, I want to, to stop for a second is when maybe an architect, it's a new architect that comes into the team. Because if you have the, the product in production, that does not mean that uh, the architectural journey has stopped. Because as I was saying, the product can evolve because we have the market that changes a lot. So we have competition. So maybe the stakeholders would just think about another direction for the product. We have the technology stack that can change, or maybe we can want to introduce something that makes the product more uh, performant or more easy to use, better uh, user flows and things like this. So the application can change and the role of an architect, it's important even after the product is in production. 
when we have a new architect, maybe in an existing uh, product, I would add also trying to work at the at gaining uh, the trust of the team because that sometimes is even more important than uh, taking ar architectural uh, decisions right away. So it's important to um, gain the trust of the team, collaborate with the team, and then start uh, also working. But just to <laughs> to short uh, shorten the the story, an architect's work does not end in the moment that the application is in production. Okay, I think this were for the moment the questions that we have. Um, you can approach me um, both on LinkedIn and Twitter. We can connect. And if you have any other insights, let's discuss about it. Thank you very much and have a great day.